everyone. Thank you for coming um, to this webinar. Um, so this is uh, intended to be one of the uh, more um, introductory webinars to active reports. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, before we do, I wanted to uh, let you guys know that um, if you're not familiar with GoToWebinar, um, you should have a, um, a pane towards uh, the side of your screen um, where if you have any questions throughout the presentation, uh, you can ask uh, the questions. Um, I do have um, Gupesh Malhotra with me. Um, he's uh, one of uh, our product managers for Active Reports. He's going to be monitoring the questions. Um, so if you ask any questions pertaining to the presentation or Active Reports or Active Reports server in general, um, he'll be able to answer you. Um, and then towards the end of the presentation, we will also have a question and answer session. Um, so we will also address um, any remaining questions um, at that time as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Mateen Feroz. Uh, I will be presenting this, um, this session. Um, and the plan for today is essentially to go over um, active reports. Um, and this demo or this presentation is intended in a way or it's structured in a way to show you why our customers have chosen active reports because we can sit here and tell you all the good things about active reports, but it's better if you understand, if you know why our customers have chosen active reports and how active reports has, um, was able to solve their problems uh, and their reporting needs. Um, so this is essentially the idea behind this uh, presentation. So um, uh, we're going to go through some of those things as well as uh, some of the main features that our customers liked about active reports that they used to solve their reporting needs and their, their, their issues. Um, and some of those uh, uh, we will cover in our discussion and demo. Um, HTML5 viewer, for example, uh, we're going to go over some of the demos and incorporate the HTML5 viewer in that. Uh, we're going to also do a demo on custom data providers because not everyone is going to have the same data. Not everyone is going to have a traditional data source um, or database. Uh, so the custom data provider is a way to essentially connect active reports to whatever data source uh, you have. If you can generate a data set from your data source, um, you're able to connect active reports and bind it and generate reports from that data source. Um, and then we're also, with that custom data provider, we're also going to use the um, end user designer, one of our more popular features with active reports, uh, with our customers, with um, what this en enables users to do is give um, give the ability to their end users to generate and design their own reports. Uh, and then also the other uh, thing that our customers appreciate is um, having the ability to generate uh, secure PDFs. Uh, and again, we're, we'll end this uh, presentation with a question and answer session. Uh, before I proceed, I'm going to uh, do a couple of quick polls just to get an idea of um, the demographic that we have. So the first poll that we're going to do um, is essentially asking you uh, your job function at this point. Um, so are you a developer? Are you a report author? Are you a project manager? Are you an end user? Okay, so it looks like uh, about 85% of us have completed uh, the poll, um, and it seems like uh, the majority um, of us are developers. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, close this one. And let's go ahead and ask you another set of questions. How familiar are you with active reports? So are you um, not familiar at all uh, you're just hearing about it and just wanted to find out what it's about. Um, are you, do you currently have active reports? You're a, a veteran user of active reports and just uh, um, wanting to see how, um, how we rec the, the recommended method of doing things with active reports.
Okay. So again, um, pretty much looks like that uh, the majority of us are um, um, are have already own, have uh, do own active reports right now, um, and so you are um, likely a uh, a veteran user. You're familiar with active reports. Um, so instead of um, instead of spending too much time on the basics of active reports, uh, we're going to sort of whiz through. Uh, the presentation and get right into the demo. Um, so Active Reports, you already know, is a, um, a .NET tool that is specifically designed for reporting. Um, it integrates uh, the uh, built-in uh, Visual Studio Designer. Uh, there's also a Query Designer, if you're not familiar with it, where we'll show that as well. And then the three types of reports that Active Reports builds um, in the section report, as everyone's familiar with that section report, um, it has the three sections or multiple sections. Uh, being the page header, report header, uh, detail section, and then the footers as well. And if you need the grouping, groupings in there as well. Uh, the page report is essentially um, a, uh, a report that is bound by the size of a page, so the eight and a half by 11 type of thing that um, you, are, you, want to, you want to be bound by the size of the page. Um, and this is what the function of a page report is. An RDL report is, not, uh, is similar to the page report, but it's not bound, so it can uh, vary in size. Um, and it just sort of prints um, as much as it can fit on a single page. Um, that's essentially uh, the three types of reports that Active Report builds. And again, I'm going through this very fast, so if you have any questions, please uh, do uh, ask the questions if from in the question pane. Um, Active Reports also has multiple uh, viewer controls, and these are all customizable from HTML5 viewer, WinForms, WPF, ASP.NET Web Viewer. Um, all of these controls, again, are, uh, viewer controls are customizable. Uh, so you can change the look and feel, add buttons, add images, add icons, whatever you need to add, uh, you're, you're able to customize that. Um, and as far as generating reports, uh, you have uh, a, a slew of uh, controls that you can choose from, from incorporating maps into your reports, table of contents, tablets, barcode, rich text box, charts, um, and then many more controls that you'll be able to see in uh, use when uh, using active reports. Um, <clears throat> finally, uh, the uh, fully customizable end user designer control that you can pass on to your end users that they can use to generate and um, design their own reports. Um, and you can actually embed this into an application and pass that application to your end users. Um, so why are people choosing active reports, Grape City and active reports? Um, as I've mentioned before, this is something that I was uh, asked just last week about. Uh, one of the customers asked me about this. Um, he said that um, his company wants to, wants to buy a product that they want to be sure that the company and the product are stable, that after some time they're not going to go bankrupt, they're not going to go out of business, that they're stable and they're going to support their product and stand behind it and continue to develop it. Um, Grape City being in the market for 30 plus years and developing active reports since 1998, you can be sure that this company um, is stable and the product is stable and that there's, there's constant development and enhancement going on behind this product. So we have a very good understanding of what uh, the industry, reporting industry needs are, uh, what you need and what you uh, are looking for um, in, your, uh, in your reporting. Um, so we, this is what we have, uh, this is why we've been in the business uh, for so long, because we're, we, we have an understanding of this industry. Um, so this is why our customers choose um, active reports. <clears throat> so let's go, uh, let's go ahead and start some of, the, uh, some of the demos. So the first thing that we're going to do um, is we're going to create a, um, a, a, an ASP.NET application and use the um, uh, we're going to use the HTML5 uh, viewer uh, in that. So let's go ahead and create um, an empty web app. Okay. <clears throat> So 
So uh, we have an empty web, app, web application here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, add in a couple a uh, couple folders. Uh, one for scripts because since we're going to be using HTML5 viewer, we need a folder for scripts and we need a folder uh, for CSS as well. So let's go ahead and bring in uh, those um, those particular files. Uh, let's go ahead. Okay, HTML, and let's bring those in. Um, and then for CSS, we're going to go ahead and bring this from the same folder, the CSS file. All right. The next thing, uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and add a, a form, a web form to this. So we'll just say main page. And in this form, we're going to go ahead and reference the, all the jQuery and JavaScript files that we need to reference, as well as the, um, the CSS files and the, um, the JS files for the viewer that we just added. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and add the, these lines in the um, head tags. And then as far as the viewer itself, let's go ahead and add the line of code just to add the viewer in here. <clears throat> now, let's add a uh, web service. Now, in order to use the um, HTML5 uh, viewer, we need, uh, properly essentially, uh, we need the active reports uh, 10 web service uh, added. And what this does is it automatically brings in um, if it goes ahead and adds it, uh, it brings in all the DLLs, all the references that will be needed um, for this application. So it brings it all in right here. Um, so uh, let's go ahead. That's been added. Um, and now we can add a, uh, a report. So let's go ahead and generate a, uh, a new report. And we're going to uh, generate a page report. Uh, active reports 10 page report will leave the default name um, when this opens up. The first thing we're going to do is uh, bind to a data source in here. So if we go to the report explorer, right click on data source node and add a data source. Um, so for this example, I'm going to use the local um, reels.mdb file. Um, and so let's use the OLADB uh, provider and we'll select the jet OLEDB, uh, navigate to where we have all of the um, databases. So now if you're not familiar with where Active Reports installs samples, because when you install Active Reports it also installs a bunch of samples or at least gives you an option to install a bunch of samples. Um, and if you install them they go in your uh, documents, Grape City samples, Active Reports 10, and these are all your samples and the databases are all in the data folder. So we're going to select the reels database, hit OK, and then add, right click on it and add a data source. So for this purpose, uh, for, this, the, for the purposes of this report, I'm actually uh, going to be using some parameter values as well. So I'm going to pass a parameter to um, this data set. Uh, name of the parameter I'm going to change to MPAA and this is an MPAA rating. The value I'm going to just say um, parameters MPAA.value. Going back to the query, I am going to go ahead and paste in the query that we're going to use which is essentially selecting star from movies where MPAA is being retrieved from that parameter uh, that we just created. Um, now, before we use that parameter, we have to add it in the Report Explorer as well. So let's change the name of this parameter to the same name that we added there. So we're going to use MPAA. Um, and then we're going to give uh, the option or the prompt. So this is what the end user is going to be asked to enter, or this is how we're going to ask the end user to enter. So I'm going to say enter an MPAA rating and the choices are PG, PG-13 and R. 
Um, you can also add default values, but right now I'm leaving that blank. Um, so go ahead and hit OK. Um, now we can go ahead and enter or add in a table control. So we add a table control. Um, we're going to go ahead and resize this a little bit and drag the fixed page areas, the shaded areas here. Essentially, it means that the that the table can resize to this uh, to this essentially this size. Um, so let's go ahead and do that, and then uh, we're going to select the values from the data set. So if you right click on the cell adorners, it brings up all of the values in your data set. Um, so in the detail row, we're going to first, in the first column, pick the movie ID. For the second column, we're going to pick the title. And in the third column, uh, we're going to enter the MPAA uh, rating. Uh, let's go ahead and select both of these uh, rows and go to the properties. Let us um, text align these both as center. Now let's select the header and change the font on this so that the font weight is bold. And I'm going to resize the title. In some cases the title can be uh, longer and we'll just do that. Okay, so this essentially would have created our table for us. Uh, not the prettiest table, but if you pre preview it, it works. So let's go ahead and give it a rating of PG. And that creates the table. Again, it's not the prettiest, but it does the job. Um, so now let's go ahead and add the script so that this table uh, would be shown in the uh, HTML5 viewer. So going back to the main page.aspx, um, in the div, uh, we can go ahead in the body, add the script to show uh, the page report in the element viewer. And the UI type is the desktop. And we'll talk a little bit about this in just a little bit, um, just shortly. So this is all that we need to do. Uh, very simple that we reference the element, which is the element being referred to, um, uh, being referred to in the previous, um, uh, the element is being referred to here, uh, the viewer. Uh, and then <coughs> it's loading the page report into the viewer. Uh, so now if we run this, we should see that, um, let me bring the screen up on this side, we should see the HTML5 viewer. And again, you can see it's asking for um, the parameter. We'll go ahead and add it. And although the size of the um, viewer is smaller, uh, the report generates properly with the proper parameter here. So this is the HTML5 viewer. Using this viewer, you can actually export to PDF, Word, um, Excel, whatever essentially you need to export to. So if we click that, it generates a PDF and it offers you the ability to save it, open it, whatever you need to do. Um, so we'll go ahead and close this out for the time being. Now, this is the general, this is the original viewer. <clears throat> you can customize this, as I mentioned, to however you want to show the viewer, whatever way you want to create the viewer, whatever, however you want to make the viewer look. Um, so in order to show you that, I'm not going to customize this, but I'm going to show you uh, one of our samples uh, that exactly has done exactly that. So it has, <clears throat> excuse me, it has um, customized the, uh, the viewer um, in a way that we'll see um, the UI looks completely different. So the general viewer, the normal viewer, if we load a page report, uh, it will load immediately into the uh, original HTML5 viewer. Now, if we click the custom UI, you will see the difference here. Um, the, the, the banner up, up here is gone, uh, so you have a more um, attractive banner here. Um, and you can click one of these genre names, and you will have the custom UI 
uh, show up. So you can do the, you have the paging enabled, the pagination, um, and the report builds uh, beautifully. This is uh, essentially the demo for the HTML5 viewer. Um, if you have any questions again for these, uh, for these, uh, for anything that we've covered so far, uh, please do ask the questions. And Bupesh is here; um, he will be able to answer your questions. Um, let's go ahead. We're going to continue uh, our demo. The next demo that I'm going to show, the next uh, feature that I'm going to show, something that our customers have have, have um, appreciated, uh, is the uh, custom data provider. So for that purpose, uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and create a new application. Uh, and I'm going to create, for this purpose, I'm going to create a, uh, let's create a desktop application, a Windows form, mm, custom data provider app. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's set the property for this window uh, to open maximized. Let's resize this. Um, the first thing that what, I, what, I, what we're going to add from the Active Reports uh, toolbox is the Report Explorer. And for the Report Explorer, we're going to dock this once it gets added here. We're going to dock it to the left, resize it a little bit. Okay, so dock to the left. Okay, resize it. And then I'm going to add the designer. So this is essentially the end user designer uh, that you can add. So for this one, I'm going to dock it fill and um, that should be all we need to do. So click back on the report explorer, change the report designer from none to designer one. So just binding the two together essentially. Um, so that's it. Let's go ahead and double click the header and do some coding. Uh, so for some Simplicity's sake, I'm just copying and pasting. It's nothing difficult to, to, to type these in, but just uh, for the sake of keeping it simple. Oh, it added it twice. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, and then for the um, for loading the report, I'm just going to, in the form load event, add the code to load the report, and it's going to load a report that essentially is titled demo report.rdlx. Um, this is all you need to do. So pass it through, uh, you know, have it read into an XML reader and then just pass that reader into um, the designer. That's basically all that needs to be done. Very simple. Now, that's good. Let's go ahead and add the, um, add a config file uh, because we need to, um, uh, for custom data, we need to essentially edit the, uh, the query designers and the data 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 source the uh, uh, wizard uh, so that it adds in uh, our um, custom data. So let's go ahead and select a text file. Let's do that. Why is it not finding a text file? <clears throat> There we go. That looks better. Okay. And we're going to name this Grape City dot Oops, come on. Active reports dot config. <clears throat> and in this config file, the code that we're going to use uh, is essentially a few lines of code that will uh, call some helper files to edit um, the wizards and we'll see how it's editing. So basically it's calling the um, uh, CSV data provider factory. Uh, we'll be adding that in a little bit and the query editor. 
Again, we'll be adding these in just a little bit. So let's go ahead and close this for now. Um, let me add a uh, let me add our data source here. So add an existing item, and the existing item that we're going to add. Come on. is my orders that CSV so we're gonna essentially pull in a CSV file uh, and that will be our um, custom data okay <clears throat> let's go ahead and create a report again add a new item let's add a uh, reporting let's add a page report and we'll name it as we said demo oops, report okay and that will open that up and for the demo report let's go ahead and set the copy output directory um, for the uh, table let's go ahead and add a table here again resize and drag the fixed page layout down uh, to the right and down <clears throat> so that the table has room to expand um, the table we're going to give it a data set name of data set one we're going to um, highlight the top the, the top row which is a header heading header row and we'll change the background color to light green we're going to add grouping and the grouping that we're going to use uh, is wonderful okay bear with us just a little bit we had a power outage in in the office okay there we go we're back up so if anybody can't hear us please, please raise your hand so let's go ahead and enter the expression so the expression is fields <coughs> order number so what this means is that we're grouping on a field order on the field order number um, and that's basically it that's all we need to do for grouping uh, and that adds a group header and a group footer. We don't need this table footer, so we're going to delete this row. For the group header, I'm going to take the make the background color aquamarine. Lubesh, can you ask everyone if they can hear us, please? Just make sure. We have audio. <clears throat> okay. So let's go ahead and uh, put the column titles, column names up here. Uh, the group header, I'm going to uh, make this uh, order number. And these two rows I'm going to highlight and merge. These two cells rather, I'm going to highlight and merge and I'm going to make them uh, equal to the field order number, that value. So I want to essentially show the order number here. Uh, let's go ahead. Okay, um, microphone seems to be working. It says network connection has been reestablished, so we should be good. Okay. Um, Let's repeat the last four, five minutes. Okay, so going back, 
uh, a little bit. So we added the table just for repetition purposes. We added the table. Uh, we um, attached grouping to it, and we're grouping by order number. Uh, so this added the group header and the group footer. We'll leave those as is. The detail row is as is. Uh, we have uh, essentially just added the row, uh, rather the column names. Uh, we're going to format these. So highlight the top column, the top row, which is the column header. Uh, we will text align these as center. We will make them bold. Control, whoops. Let's go ahead, highlight them, Control B, and that should be good. As for this column, I am going to expand the product name a little bit. Uh, let's highlight this column, make it bold as well, and this particular row, we're going to text align to the right so that it aligns with order number. Okay, so the formatting is good. Uh, the only thing left to do is add in the uh, fields. So we'll just, we'll just add in the product. We'll add in the unit price. And we will add in the total. One last thing that I want to add in here as well is summary. So order total. And that is going to be uh, equal to, so we're going to sum this up, sum this particular uh, column. That is it. So one last thing that we can do is, since these are prices, uh, we'll enter the format for these, for these uh, particular cells. So format, we'll and C, enter C for currency. And that is uh, basically it. So let me do one last thing. Okay. So that's it. Now we can't preview it because we don't have the data bound to it yet. Um, so this is just essentially a, uh, a basic empty unbound um, page report. Uh, that's basically all it is. So it doesn't have the data bound to it. We're going to go ahead and uh, save this. We're going to, in order to use this, uh, in order to use the um, my orders at CSV, uh, we're going to need to bring in the helper classes, and the helper classes will uh, essentially uh, alter or change the uh, connection wizards, the data set and data source connection wizards, uh, so that it allows us to bind to our custom data source, custom data. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring in a project that uh, that we have already created. Um, so I'm going to bring in this um, custom project. Uh, where was it? Okay. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so we brought in the custom data provider. So this includes a few classes here. Uh, this uh, CSV data provider factory will change uh, the, will enter uh, the CSV data provider uh, in the data connection and then the query itself uh, will essentially change the query designer, add a button there so that we can choose our uh, CSV file. Um, in order to use this we need to actually add a reference to it in our main application. So let's go to solution, add a reference to the CSV um, custom data provider. Okay, now that is basically all we need to do. So now if we run this, it will run this particular application and we should be able to, um, we should be able to um, choose or connect to our custom data source. So in our Report Explorer, just like in Visual Studio Report Explorer, um, we can right click on the data source, add a data source, and in the wizard that comes up, uh, in this drop-down, we see that the CSV data provider has been added. So let's go ahead and select it, click OK. Again, right-click on the data source, add a data set. We'll leave it data set 1 as we need to. And choose from the query string this button that's been added. And this will allow us to choose our 
uh, CSV file, myorders.csv. And the file that um, uh, the, the class, the, CS, the, the, the um, query class, query editor class, uh, it also parses the CSV file and brings up all of the data from that file. So if we click OK, uh, we see that all of the attributes have been added to um, our uh, data set. <clears throat> now, at this point, the product is bound, the unit price is bound, and the total is bound, and we're summing everything up. So let's see if it works. Let's preview this report, and we see that the report generates properly with uh, order numbers uh, being grouped. Uh, so order number 293 has two orders under it, and the total is being generated uh, as needed. Um, now, one thing that I should mention, this is the end user designer that your end users will, would essentially use. So this is completely customizable. Uh, you can customize the end user designer uh, to give your end users the ability to essentially create, um, design, uh, and change reports as, as, as they see fit. Um, this particular designer that I've added here is very, very, very basic, so it doesn't have any of those options, but again, this is something that you can uh, add on to your uh, in your application. So for the purposes of this demo, um, this essentially uh, is it for uh, using uh, active uh, active reports and user designer as well as custom data provider. So let's continue to move on. So we're moving on very quickly through uh, these um, reports or three, through these demos. The last demo that we have uh, that we're going to show is um, exporting to PDF. And on top of that, we're going to add some security to that PDF. So we're going to add two passwords, one for the owner or the admin, uh, the generator of the PDF, and one for the end user. And each of them will have um, differing uh, permissions. Um, we'll, let's see how this is done. So let's go ahead and create a new project. <clears throat> Okay. So let's create, we'll stay with, uh, let's actually go ahead and create a page report. Yeah, let's just keep it, uh, let's just name it as um, Okay, that should be simple enough. So this adds, this creates the data source, it, rather it creates the uh, viewer uh, for uh, the desktop application, automatically added, automatically uh, docked. It also creates the page report. Um, so we can keep it as is. Um, now what we can do actually is if we wanted to import the previous, uh, the previous um, page report that we created just in the, uh, uh, where was it, right here, uh, which is the demo report. We can actually import that very easily so that um, we save some time here. Let's go ahead and do that. So in our projects and uh, Yeah, right here. Okay. All files. There we go. Okay. So now in the code behind for uh, the form, we need to modify so that it's bringing in the demo report instead of the page report. Okay, that's basically it. So if we wanted to run it, let's go ahead and try to run it right now. See what happens. So it's giving an error, the data set one. Oh, that's right, because it's not bound. Okay. Let's go back to uh, the report. 
let's in the report designer let's go ahead and actually let's let's just uh delete this report actually it's just the the the, the table let's just start off because i don't want to redo the csv um the csv report so let's just go ahead and bind it to something let's bind it to uh, I don't know, let's bind it to an OADB jet and let's select, go back to our data documents, let's go to Grape City Samples, Active Reports 10, Data, let's bring in now let's keep, let's bring in the reels, so stay with the reels database. Okay, so let's add a data set and we will, now I don't know what the names of the tables are in here, so let's use the query designer um, and figure out the names of the available tables. Let's select one, choose one. Okay, so you see all of the table names show up here uh, and then you can uh, expand them and choose individual fields or just drag and drop the whole table. Um, so let's actually, uh, let me choose, there's one that's right here, DVD stock. So we'll just go ahead and drag and drop it here. We can execute to see what exactly is being shown here and save it. Okay, that's basically the query designer. So the fields get added. Let's go ahead and add a table report or a table control uh, to the report. Let's expand it. And we can make a very simple, very simple report. Um, so let's just add the title, let's add the store price and let's add how many we have in stock. Let's format this a little bit and the properties. Uh, so the text align is center. Let's go ahead and select the header. Let's make the header some nice color. Uh, so let's say, I don't know, let's make it khaki, I don't know, um, and let's make it bold. Okay, control B. All right, let's expand it so that the title takes a little more place, space. Let's format the column for currency, and that's basically all we need to do here. So if we preview it, we should be good. Okay, let's go ahead and run it, make sure everything loads properly. Once this is done, we're going to export this to PDF. Okay, so looks good. Let's go back to the form1.cs. We're going to undock this uh, control, just dock it to the top add a button here and dock the button to the bottom and fill this again bring it to the front and change the properties on the button so the button instead of saying button one it says export to PDF that's it double click the button to add the click event for it. Now, in order to export, uh, in order to export the um, report to PDF, let me go ahead and there's actually we need to add a, a reference, a PDF export that PDF reference here. <clears throat> Export, where is it? PDF, Word, Web, PDF, there we go. Okay. 
All right, so we added that. Now I'm going to just copy and paste some code here real quick. Bear with me. Uh, let's see, let's see. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so we're creating an output directory. And then we're going to generate the settings. <clears throat> okay, so essentially what we're doing here Let me save this. Okay, so what we've done here, PDF settings is not recognized. Oh, that's why. Okay, let's just do this. Okay, so what we've done here essentially just create a directory in C uh, for my PDF in order to save it. Um, and then we're setting PDF, essentially settings, um, so that we can save the PDF in, in whatever settings so we're, gi we're giving it. Um, so the settings that we're giving right now is permissions. We're not allowing anything. So the permissions are zero for the end user. They're not allowed to print. They're not allowed to save. Um, and then since we are encrypting it with security, we're going to be giving passwords. So the user has a password and the owner has a password. This is the admin password. The user won't be able, doesn't have any permissions, whereas the owner has all the permissions. Um, so if we go ahead and run this, let's see what happens. Okay, so the report generated, let's go ahead and click the export to PDF button. Okay. Let's take a look at our c.pdf. Uh, my PDF, okay. My PDF is generated. Okay, so is generated, but it's asking for a password. The password that we gave for the end user was lowercase abc123. And this generates the PDF. Um, so now you see the user can't print. They can't save um, because there were no permissions given to them. Uh, we can go ahead and close this and reopen and enter the admin password or the owner's password which was capital A B C one two three and now the admin can print um, they can essentially uh, they have all permissions for this uh, for this PDF so we have um, we have the same PDF being we have the same PDF being used by two different uh, two different users with two different permissions um, so this is basically uh, all uh, all of the all, all that needs to be done for uh, the PDF. Um, let's go ahead and continue our um, our presentation. So now what we've done so far, 
um, what we've taken a look at is active reports being a specialized and um, uh, a specialized tool, specialized controls, just specifically created for reporting in the .NET platform. Uh, you saw that it was it had the Visual Studio ID integrated um, in, into Visual Studio, so it was just seamlessly uh, using the .NET framework as well as uh, reporting uh, with active reports. Um, the reports you saw. Uh, it can be used across all pl platforms. So we use the same report, for example, in uh, WinForms, in uh, HTND, in, in, in the web application, uh, as well as um, you know uh, we can use them and display them in a PDF, in a PDF, WPF um, viewer, um, or a web viewer within ASP.NET. <clears throat> and we saw also that the uh, all of the designers, all of the viewers, uh, they're actually uh, highly customizable. That you can customize them. Um, to your liking and to your end users liking as well. Um, now, what we would uh, appreciate at the end of this demo as we, as we wrap up, what we ask you to do is at the end of this um, presentation, uh, when we end, you will receive a uh, small survey, uh, just five questions. If you can fill that out, give us some feedback on the presentation itself what you liked, what you didn't like, what we can, uh, you know, what you would like us to look at uh, in the future. Um, or what you would like us to uh, incorporate into our webinars in the future. We would appreciate your feedback in that regard. Um, if you haven't already downloaded Active Reports, uh, you can download a free 30-day trial um, on, uh, on our website, activereports.grapecity.com. Uh, we also have a server product. Um, unfortunately, time didn't permit us to talk about it, but we do have a server product that uh, essentially um, allows you to host uh, reports as well as uh, you know, manage the server uh, give your end users the uh, opportunity to uh, create uh, and host the reports on your server as well. Um, if you have any other questions, if you have any um, you know, feedback or anything like that, you feel free to contact support um, throughout your trial if you, if you download the trial period. Um, if you have any questions, you do get free support, technical support, so uh, feel free to contact us, uh, whether through forums or uh, through support itself. Uh, you will find, find all of the information at that link, uh, arhelp.grapecity.com. Um, if you also wanted to contact sales for whatever reason, quotes, um, you know, trials, extension trial, extending your trials, uh, you have the uh, you have the email address there, activereports.sales.grapecity, uh, and then you can also check out our upcoming webinars. Um, and then aside from that, we ask that you stay in touch with us, follow us on Twitter at Active Reports. Uh, and then we would like to thank you for being here um, and attending this webinar. Um, if you have any questions at the end, uh, at this time, please uh, ask your questions and Bufesh and I will uh, attempt to answer, answer them to the best of our ability. Do we have any questions there, Bufesh? I answered most of them. Okay. So most of them have been answered. If you have any other questions, please, uh, please pop them up. Okay, so the end user designer, uh, end user report designer client doesn't need additional license as long as the build server is licensed. Is that right? Um, so yes, as long as you as long as you have a license and you build it and you deploy it, yes, uh, you don't need a another license for uh, that particular uh, end user designer because essentially it ends up being your code because it is a sample, one of the samples included in um, in the download. So you can modify the sample, change it. Uh, update it, customize it, however you want. Okay, I don't think we have any other questions. So uh, somebody had asked in a previous session if they can use uh, web service as a as a data source. Um, as I mentioned uh, previously, um, you can essentially use anything as a data source as long as you can create a data set out of it you can use it. So if you can create a data set out of your data service, your web service, then yes, you can use that as a data source. Um, and um, we're getting, uh, I think everybody's uh, logging off. If you have any final questions, please post them. If not, uh, please feel free to get in touch with us, um, get in touch with sales. Uh, if you have any questions, any feedback, anything like that, do you have 2D barcodes? Uh, yes, we have 2D barcodes. Um, unfortunately, I did not get a chance to show that, uh, but we do have the 2D barcodes. Um, thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mick. Uh, 